A year ago, I went on a business trip to Tumen. At first I thought for a month, it ended up being a whole year. When I told my wife after two weeks of being on a business trip that I was staying here for a long time, she was hysterical but could not leave to join me because she had just recently got a job at a good firm and she had good prospects, especially since I knew that in any case I would be back. In general, we had a big fight with her. One evening, I went out to dinner at a restaurant, and there, I met a very beautiful and nice girl, and she was not stupid, she was wise beyond her years. And at some point, I felt very good around her. We met again and eventually our passion took over, she moved in with me after a week of acquaintance, and I warned her that I was married, and that my wife lived in another city, but she said it was okay. So I had a super month in my life with her, but as it always happens, good things just can't last that long and we ended up breaking up over some little thing. We just had a fight, she took offense, and I, like a proud man, decided not to ask for forgiveness. And that was it. Perhaps this was due to the fact that I still communicated with my wife, kept in touch, because I knew that soon I would return home and most likely reconcile with her. Another two months passed. I can say I have already started to forget the girl with whom I lived one month, she is very deeply in my soul. And then I met at a corporate party with a very cool, fun girl. She is not as beautiful, but very funny, and with her completely easy and not boring. Let's call it Veronica. Anyway, we had sex for a month, which eventually led to a pregnancy. My wife and I do not have children yet, that is, this will be my first child. I told her that of course I was not going to marry her, but I was going to help raise the child anyway. Veronica said that she was sure to keep the child, and if it bothers me, then it's okay, she will bring him up herself, luckily she comes from a wealthy family. Nevertheless I spent all that time with Veronica till the end of my business trip, with the exception of the last month. Here was the fun part. One evening I went to the grocery store and there I met the very same, by the way, I forgot to introduce her, her name was Marina. We chatted very well and agreed to meet the other day for dinner. In short we had a nice dinner. We had a very unforgettable last month before we left and I felt that I really love her and she reciprocated. A month went by and I left, I told Veronica that I would come for the birth and I told Marina that I would pick her up but I didn't know what to do with my wife yet. I came home, made up with my wife and everything was fine with us again but I couldn't say anything to her, neither about the baby nor about the girl I was madly in love with. And then the hour X is coming soon, when Veronica will give birth and when it is time to take Marina, as promised. Here. What to do in this situation I do not understand. One thing I know for sure, that I really want to hold my future child in his arms, awaken, apparently, the feelings of a father after all the firstborn. How to be? What to do? I cannot understand. If I stay with my wife, I will lose my connection to my child and my love. If I stay with Veronica, I will lose my wife and the years of family happiness that I had with her, as well as my love in the person of Marina. If I stay with Marina, I will again lose my child and the aforementioned years of living with my wife, but I will find happiness in my beloved, and perhaps, I will have children with her and many years of family life. I have told you everything. My name is Angelica. I am 22 years old. I always thought that only a painted beauty could be lucky in life. I think you know what I mean, although I am quite a pretty girl. Well, I was wrong. God sent me the best that could be for me. But I, I graduated high school at 17. I went to university as a part-time student, went to work. I came from a very ordinary middle-class family. I had to earn my own money. And then, at the same age of 17, I met a guy online. He was eight years older than me. Ilya, that was his name, began to correspond with me. We decided to meet in reality. I didn't like him at all at that moment. Ilya had invited me to his place for coffee. It was winter. And so we started chatting little by little. He turned out to be an interesting conversationalist. He worked as a programmer. I liked him more and more, we met. We went to the Crimea in summer, to rest in tents. And at 18, I married him. We had a nice family, we suited each other in everything. But as it happens, one but happened. I started talking about children. 
He said he didn't mind, but that when we were on our feet, we would buy an apartment. We lived in a rented house at the time. I did not understand why others have children and achieve everything. Having the status of happy parents and without all this. About two months after marriage, I began to notice changes in my health. After another two months, I didn't have my period. I was happy. I thought my dream had come true. I was pregnant. I didn't go to the doctor for a month on purpose. I was afraid the answer would be negative. Then I decided to come to a conclusion: hormonal imbalance. My head was full of thoughts. But why? What was wrong? I was a completely healthy girl. Never had any problems. I decided to fight this disease. I was prescribed birth control for six months. I can't tell you the tears I cried when I took them. It took four months. I couldn't take it anymore and quit. I was surprised. Everything stabilized and got better. Life went on. But my husband was against having children because of finances. He earned very good money in comparison with others, and so did I. And then I had a nervous breakdown. It was like I was switched. I met a client at work. We went for a walk, and everything spun. I did what I regret the most in life. I cheated on my husband. And then a few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. There was no limit to my joy and happiness. Told my husband, I started going to the doctor. My husband had some men's tests, and the answer came back. The doctor looked at it and said, "I wonder how you got pregnant by your husband, low activity." And then it hit me: What if? What if it was not from my husband? No, it's unlikely. It can't be. I was using protection, and with my husband, only without. But this unpleasant thought was so ingrained in my head that not a minute went by that I didn't think about it. I looked at Ilyusha, how he took care of me, and thought that I couldn't do that. I couldn't cheat. I couldn't give him someone else's baby. And I made up my mind. I dared to tell him, and I did. He didn't file for divorce. Didn't turn his back on me. He said, "When you have the baby, we'll do the DNA." And then everything will be clear. At seven weeks, I went in for an ultrasound. No heartbeat. Fetus froze. The fetus is for all of them, and for me, it's the most precious thing in my life. Then the cleans, and nothing. Angina with a 40 degree fever. And my husband moved to Kiev. He found a job with higher salary. Then I go to visit him. He sort of gives me a second chance. Everything in a very small step comes back to the old way, but after the cleans, I have this hormonal breakdown again, and again the tears in the treatment and my husband's entreaties for a baby. I felt like he didn't understand me at all at the time. Another friend of his became a father, and I freaked out and moved to our hometown, and we started living separately. I thought he'd come to his senses and call me. Just then, I met the man with whom I had cheated on my husband, and began to build a relationship with him. My husband soon went to live with another girl, and then we got divorced. And this is the ending I came to. I now have a man with me who loves me, but I don't love him. It makes me feel really bad. It's like I'm in bondage. I tried to get my husband back, but it didn't work. I'm just at a crossroads. As it turned out later, my mother-in-law did not want me and my husband to have children quickly, and made me a health spell. I thank God that I met a woman who took it upon herself to heal me with prayers and holy water. I feel much better now, and the treatment at the doctors did not give me a permanent result. For four years, my mother-in-law put me in such agony. Now I feel very bad. I blame myself all the time. And I understand what my fault and mistake is, but there is no turning back. There is not a day that goes by that I do not think about how much I love my husband. A lot of people will judge me, and they will be right. I still can't wash away the rock I have in my soul. And when I think that I'm only 22 years old and I've managed to mess up my life, 
and lose my baby boy, I just don't want to live. I do not know why I wrote this confession. It's all true, nothing embellished. Maybe as an example to others, or maybe to break off a little piece of the rock that is in my soul.